I'm sure that it is no secret that I love to sew. And I'll be honest, when I'm not sewing, I'm actually thinking about all the things that I wanna sew and planning new sewing projects. But sometimes searching for new sewing patterns that match my wardrobe inspiration takes a really long time and half the time I can't even find exactly what I'm looking for anyway. So today I'm going to be sharing a few of my favorite pattern hacks in my wardrobe and a little bit of an insight into my process for hacking my wardrobe to fit my personal style. So lately I've been really inspired by these v-neck maxi dresses that have kind of the poofy sleeves and the cinched waist and I just feel like they're a little bit cottagecore but they're like cottagecore grown up a little bit and so I knew that the Romy wrap pattern was going to be the perfect mix of romance while also letting me create something very comfortable that I can just pop overhead. So I'll show you how I made this dress. I found this really pretty floral rayon fabric at Joanne and it had this shirring along one of the edges and the idea is that you can just kind of create a really easy shirred dress and I was really hoping to find something that didn't have all the shirring in it even though I did end up using the shirring but it, the shirring kind of came out really easily. It's basically a chain stitch so if you kind of get it started you can pull off the shirring really easily on this fabric and then once you pull off the shirring you can kind of iron out all of the wrinkles that were created by the shirring. This does leave some little tiny holes in the fabric but I think these will probably kind of close up once this fabric is washed again. The front bodice of the Romy wrap pattern extends all the way to the waist and I really don't need that. I'm just going to kind of fold out that extra because I just want this to overlap right at the center front just a little bit. It doesn't have to go all the way to the waist for what I'm doing so I'm just going to fold out that extra Excess, and that is basically how I'm going to modify the pattern and I'll cut two of those mirrored. I'm also going to be using a bias binding to finish the neckline edge. The original pattern comes with a facing but I wanted to keep this extra extra simple so I'm using a single fold bias binding to finish that neckline. Here is how the bias binding finish looks on that neckline. And then for the sleeve, I wanted to utilize some of that shirring on this fabric. So I cut the sleeve so that the sleeve hem had that shirring on it and it's already finished. I assembled the bodice as I would normally following the pattern instructions. And then you can see here, I've just basted that front wrap together. To cut this fabric, it's easiest to cut through the shirring and then rip the fabric so that it stays on grain. And I cut two panels for what is gonna be the skirt and made those a little bit smaller than my waist measurement because it is so stretchy. And then I also cut down the shirring to about three or four inches because I didn't really need that long of a piece of shirring on the dress. Then I sewed those two panels together at the side seams to create the skirt. And I just tried the skirt on and kind of held it up to the bodice to figure out if I needed to take any more ease out of the skirt, which I did. And then to also decide where I wanted to attach it to the bodice. I ended up trimming about two inches off of those bodice pieces because I wanted that skirt to be attached right under the bust. Then I attached that skirt to the bodice right sides together, making sure to stretch, you know, stretch the shirring out as I was sewing this so that when it's finished, it kind of gathers the bust under the bust there. And that will make it easy for me to pull this overhead because it'll have some nice stretch to it but it'll still have that shaping provided by the shirring. Then I just hemmed the bottom of the dress and I love how it turned out. So excited about this one. Next up is a basic knit wrap dress a la Diane von Furstenberg. These dresses are iconic for a reason. They're timeless, they're comfortable, they're kind of sexy, but also appropriate for just about any occasion. And I don't know why it's taken me so long to make one for myself, but now that I have a pattern, I'm sure that I have more of these in my future. I used my comfy tee pattern for this, which is just a very basic fitted t-shirt pattern with a couple of different necklines. If you have a t-shirt pattern that you like that's a fitted tee pattern, you can use that as well. It's a very easy pattern drafting exercise, so I'll show you how to do that right now. I'll be making this dress out of this like mystery knit that I found as a remnant at Fields Fabric in Grand Rapids. To make the modifications to the pattern, you're gonna need the front and the back bodice of a basic t-shirt pattern. Starting with the front bodice, you're just going to mirror the front bodice so that it's symmetrical on both sides. Then draw a line diagonally from the shoulder where it meets the neckline on one side of the bodice to the waistline on the opposite side of the bodice. And you'll wanna stop this line about an inch away from the side seam and above the waistline. Then just draw a line straight down from that point. 
If you're just creating a wrap top, you can stop here and move on to the back bodice. But we are actually going to be making a dress for this tutorial, and you can do this one of two ways. You can just extend the length of this bodice. I decided to use my skirt slipper that I created in this video, and I just attached it at the waist to the bodice and extended it about 25 inches from the waist. This is gonna give me the proper hip shaping, and it does kind of follow along with the shaping of my t-shirt, so that worked out great. Then I just extended the edge to meet that wrap edge that I drafted earlier, and that completes the front bodice. The back bodice of the comfy tee is originally instructed to cut on the fold. We're actually not gonna cut it on the fold. We're gonna cut two and have a center seam down the back bodice. So I'm gonna add a little bit of extra shaping to the back bodice just to go over the bum a little bit better. And to do that, I'm again going to use my skirt sloper and attach it at the waist. And I'm aligning it at the outer hip and you'll see that I have a little excess at the center back. So I'll just fold out the excess to meet the center back and shape that back over the hip to create a nice shape that can go over the bum in the back. And you'll just wanna make sure to add seam allowance to that center back seam. But other than that, the back bodice is now finished. You can see here where I just kind of put this together with the pattern pieces that I had. And those are my skirt slopers attached to the bodice pieces. And I just attached it here at the waist, making sure that I keep that wrap edge nice and straight down to the hem of the skirt. And here you can see how I folded out that excess at the center back to create the shaping over the bum. To construct this garment, you're gonna cut two mirrored of both the front and the back bodice, and you'll attach the back bodice at that center back seam, and then you'll attach the right side of the front bodice to the back bodice at the shoulder and the side seam, and then you'll attach the left side the same way at the shoulder and the side seam. Then you'll just attach the sleeves as you would normally, and I got the thing constructed, and I, I like this fabric that I got, but I didn't super love it, and I really kind of wanted to change the color. So I decided to dye it, and I'm using the RIT Dye More. This is what you can use for synthetic fabrics. I use the apricot orange and the chocolate brown. I kind of just eyeballed it. It's probably about a half a bottle of the apricot orange and maybe like a quarter of the bottle of the brown. I made sure to wet the fabric before I put it into the dye bath. And I'm doing the stovetop method here, which is recommended for the synthetic fabrics because this, this is a synthetic knit fabric. And then I just made sure to agitate it every once in a while and did this for about 30 minutes, rinsed it out really well, washed it in the washing machine with a little bit of detergent, and it turned out really, really, really good. I love how this turned out. It's just this very, very beautiful kind of copper brown color. This isn't a color that I normally wear, and it was just a very happy surprise. I also didn't show this earlier, but I left a little opening in one of the side seams so that I could insert the ties that I created. And I just used a knit binding out of the same material to finish the neckline and create those ties. So I just made the binding extra long and it's you know long enough on each end to wrap around my body twice so that I can pull it through the tie, wrap it around my body and tie it in the front. This next hack might be my favorite. I love how this turned out. Back when I released the Bridget T pattern, I mentioned in that video that I thought it would make a really cool maxi length or midi length dress. And then I like promptly forgot about it and you know, summer came and I did not end up making it. But then more recently, I decided that I wanted to make myself a t-shirt dress, but something that was more like an elevated basic. And I was like, uh, yeah, the Bridget T is perfect for this. Anyway, here is what I did to turn the Bridget T into a midi length dress. I'll be making this dress out of a medium weight rayon ponte knit that I also found at Fields Fabrics in Grand Rapids. The process for creating this particular dress was really similar to the wrap dress in that I did add that skirt sloper at the waist again to create the proper shaping around the waist and the hips. And then for the back bodice, I again used the kind of center back seam method to get that nice shaping over the bum in the back. Then I just assembled the dress the same way that I would assemble the shirt. And I have a tutorial here on YouTube for how to assemble the shirt if you do get this pattern. So I did the exact same construction process and I left two slits in the side seams starting right above the knee down to the hem just to make it a little bit easier to kind of walk in the dress so it wasn't too tight around my calves. The only thing now that I'm noticing is that I'm getting a lot of wrinkling back here in the back and I really probably should have done a sway back adjustment on this pattern when I kind of merged those two pieces 
but I just didn't think about that at the time. So what I think I'm gonna do is, usually in a sway back, what you're doing is you're kind of taking out this bulk right here to kind of reduce these drag lines across the back because I probably have about an inch of extra fabric that I don't need back here right at the back waist. So I'm just gonna pinch that out. I'm gonna extend that seam to the front and I'm just gonna put a little seam across the front waist as well so that it kind of looks like a little design feature. <laughs> That's always my solution whenever I have fitting adjustments and I have to make some sort of change that I didn't anticipate. Um, I kind of turn it into a design feature and so I think it'll actually look kind of neat to have this little seam across the waist almost like it's a two-piece set but it's it's not. And across the front waist I'll probably just take out like maybe a quarter inch you know just basically just as much as my serger will take out with the seam allowance. Um, okay I'm gonna do that and then I will hem the sleeves and the slit and the bottom and then I think this will be done. To take out the excess, I just folded the bodice at the waist, right sides together, and kind of marked the location where I wanted to sew, tapering that back to the front, you know, so it takes a little bit more out of the back than it does the front. And then I sewed that together on my serger. And here's how the front bodice looks once it's been sewn together, and the back bodice with that excess taken out. <laughs> And while we're on the subject of pattern hacks, here are a few more pattern hacks that I have really been happy with that I've made over the last few years. I'll put links to the tutorials for all of these in the description below this video. First up is these mesh shirts that I made last fall. I love how these turned out. I have actually gotten quite a lot of wear out of them because again, they make me feel kind of sexy. They're kind of cool. They're not super revealing, but I also feel like I'm doing something a little bit edgy with my wardrobe when I wear them. I love them and I especially love the button up version that I did. I would love to make a dress version out of that as well. I also made this puffy coat that is probably, it's probably one of my most worn items in my wardrobe. Like I wear that coat all the time, all winter long. It is like wearing a big cozy sleeping bag and it turned out so great. I used my cozy jacket pattern as a base for that hack. This satin slip dress is something that I made several weeks ago. I wore it to a wedding and loved how it turned out. I used one of the vintage patterns in my stash that I found at a thrift store that I've used over and over again to create a bias cut slip dress. I also made this sleeveless blazer dress, which turned out so cute. It's kind of like a little spin on the little black dress. And for that one, I used one of the patterns in my Lutterlow pattern making kit, which I absolutely love and have done a few videos on here. And this McCall's, I think it's the 7969 pattern. This has been actually a really, really popular pattern and it comes as a dress. I just chopped it off. Like it was the easiest hack ever. I just chopped it off into a little cropped top and I've worn it quite a lot and gotten quite a lot of compliments on it. I did make it just a little bit too big and it was kind of hanging on me a little bit and getting a little bit too revealing in the front. So I just kind of like pleated the shoulders to kind of bring up the neckline a little bit and add a little bit of extra poof to the shoulders and it turned out adorable. So I'm definitely gonna be getting a lot more wear out of that one. So if you are feeling a little hesitant about hacking up your patterns and making new patterns out of them, I have a few little tips and tricks to make it maybe feel a little bit more approachable. My first tip is to just start with very simple changes. So lengthening or shortening a garment is one of the easiest ways to ease into pattern hacking. You can make long sleeves short or short sleeves long. You can add length to a shirt to turn it into a dress or you can chop off a dress to turn it into a shirt. You can add darts or pleats or ruching or shirring to reduce volume in a garment. Or you can try the slash and spread method to add volume to a garment. And be sure to keep some trace or craft or pattern paper on hand so that you can transfer the original pattern to that before you start doing all of this hacking and you know keep your original pattern intact. 
My second tip is to buy hackable patterns. I'm usually trying to find patterns that can serve multiple functions for me in my wardrobe. So unless I just really love the style of a pattern, I try to stay away from features that might make the pattern hacking process a little bit more difficult. So any kind of complicated details or asymmetrical details, especially that might make that a little bit more confusing to hack. I try to stay away from those in, in the patterns that I'm looking for as like hackable garments. Instead, I look for simple silhouettes that can almost act as like a sloper that has, you know, very simple darts and style lines. And my third tip is to use patterns that you already know that you love. If you have a pattern that you have sewn over and over again, you know the way it fits, you love the way it fits, you're familiar with the construction process, that's actually a really great pattern to experiment with hacking on. It will save you a lot of time with fretting over the fit of the final garment and allow you to focus on the fun part, the experimentation. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video and you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. You can also further support this channel and the work that I do here by becoming a member over on my Patreon. I'll put a link to that down in the description as well. And I'm also going to be having a Patreon after show, something I'm trying out lately that's been a lot of fun. So if you're interested in that, please be sure to check that out. And thank you so much to all of my patrons who have already signed up. You guys are awesome. You've been helping me pick topics for videos and just giving me a lot of really valuable feedback and supporting the work that I do, which is so, so greatly appreciated. So thank you for that. I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye. She asked, how do you prevent the work of sewing from ruining the joy of sewing? And this is a great question and something I've definitely grappled with over the years. So a few years ago, actually several years ago now, I did have a business where I was sewing products to sell.